this is Janet and Rabia. Welcome to Everest Physics Academy. Before we start, we'd like to recommend our Everest Physics books for high school, where you can find more explanations and solve applications and the problems. In this video, we are going to explain driven oscillations. Solve a problem about damp and the driven oscillations. This experiment explains the driven oscillation. Consider this swing. The swing is shifted initially to a certain initial position and then by touching my body. And then it is released from rest. Observe what will happen. As you see, the swing does not return back to its initial position since we have a friction. And the work done by the friction results in transformation part of the mechanical energy in the system into thermal. And after a certain time, the swing will stop. Since the amplitude of the swing decreases with time, so the type of oscillation now is said to be free damp mechanical oscillation. In order to make the swing oscillate with constant amplitude, we have to give energy to the system just enough to compensate the energy loss or the decrease in the mechanical energy. Then, and that by pushing the spring after each oscillation. Observe what will happen. Now I will push the, the swing. As you see, after pushing the swing, it returns back to its initial position. Since now the amplitude of oscillation is constant, so the type of oscillation is said to be driven oscillations. So, in driven oscillations, the oscillator oscillates with an external intervention. The system is provided by amounts of energy just enough to compensate for the energy decrease in order to oscillate with constant amplitude. The oscillator oscillates with the same original amplitude if there were no damping. Pay attention now. The statement, which is written in bold, has to be memorized by the student because it is the definition of the driven oscillations. Now, let's move to the application. This graph shows the abscessa axis of the center of mass G of the block of a horizontal elastic pendulum as a function of time. The block starts from rest at t0 equals 0. Given that the force constant of the spring is 20 newtons per meter, take the horizontal plane containing G as a reference level for gravitational potential energy. At equilibrium, G coincides with the origin of the x-axis. Determine the oscillation period T and indicate the name of this period. Now look at the graph. Here is the end of the first oscillation, the end of the second oscillation, the end of the third oscillation, and the end of the ninth oscillation. So as you see, nine oscillations extend over eight seconds, then the period is equal to 8 over 9, which is equal to 0 0.89 seconds. Now, what is the name of this period? It is the pseudo period of oscillation. Let's move to the second question. Determine the initial mechanical energy of the system pendulum R. So, the initial mechanical energy is equal to the initial elastic potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy. You know that the gravitational potential energy is zero because G is at the reference level of gravitational potential energy. But what is Ke zero? The block starts from rest at T zero equals zero. So V zero is equal to zero, which means that Ke zero is equal to zero. Then we still have EPE0, which is going to be 1 half Kx0 squared. The force constant is 20 newtons per meter, and X0 can be obtained from the graph. This is X0. It is 10 centimeters. It is the abscessa at T0 equal 0. So mechanical energy at T0 equal 0 is equal to 1 half times 20 times 0 0.1, which is the initial abscessa divided by 100. So now it is expressed in SI units in the meter, and the answer is 0 0.1 joules. Focus, please. This is important. Question number three. 
Calculate the mechanical energy of the system at the instance T equal capital T or at T equal one period. The figure shows that after one period, we have a turning point or X is equal to a certain maximum value, which is equal to XM of one equal nine centimeter. We know that when X is equal to a maximum value, the speed is equal to zero. So at T equal capital T or after one period, X is equal to a certain maximum value and its speed is equal to zero. So the kinetic energy at T equal T is equal to zero. Then the form of the energy after one period is only elastic. Therefore, the mechanical energy at T equal T equal one half K XM of one squared. Now, substitute for K equal 20 newtons per meter, XM of one equal 0.09 meters. So the mechanical energy at T equal T is equal to 0.081 joules. Question number four. Calculate the work done by the friction during the first oscillation. Using this formula, the variation in the mechanical energy during the first oscillation is equal to the sum of the works done by the non-conservative forces in the system. But the non-conservative force that does a work during the first oscillation is the friction force. So delta Me is equal to the work done by the friction. But delta Me is equal to Me final, which is Me at T equal one period, minus Me initial, which is Me at T equal zero. Then substitute for Me at T equal T, which is 0 0.081 joules, minus Me zero, which is calculated in the previous slide, which is equal to 0 0.1. Finally, we get the value of the work done by the friction, which is equal to minus 0 0.019 joules, Take into account that the, the work done by the friction should be negative. Now, let's move to part B. Deduce the energy needed to drive the oscillator during the first period. As we explained in this course, in order to drive the oscillations, the system is provided by amounts of energy just enough to compensate for the energy decrease. So, what is the energy lost during the first oscillation? Energy lost is equal to Me0 minus Me at the end of the first period, which is equal to the absolute value of the work done by the friction during the first period. So the lost energy is equal to 0 0.019 joules. And finally, the driving energy is equal to the lost energy, which is equal to 0 0.019 joules. Let's move to part C. Deduce the average power needed to drive the oscillator during the first period. Assume that the period of oscillation in the driving phase is equal to the period T. Now, in general, the average power is calculated by dividing the energy by the time. So, P average is equal to the driving energy over the time. And the time is one period. So, this is going to be P average is equal to 0 0.019 joules over 0 0.89 seconds. And the answer is... 0.021 watts. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share.